seek accountability. I had accountability that day. Everyone was looking at me. The Jake and Gino community that we have, they're crushing it. They've done over 54,000 units. There's over $4 billion in assets and deals that our community has bought. When individuals see their peers doing it, it gives them the confidence to do it themselves. Everybody, Jake and Gino here, and today we're discussing how to overcome fear. Now, Jake and Gino, we believe that education times action equals your results. This is a driving factor in your success. There's no doubt about it. But what if you're struggling to get started? What if you've educated yourself, but you can't get that flywheel turning? So that's the topic of today's episode. We got the G Daddy here. He's going to break it down for us. So, Gino, tell us, how do you overcome fear? How did you overcome fear getting started in multifamily? Jake, let me start off by sharing a story with you. We had the coaches retreat about a month back. You What's the coaches a, retreat, Gino? The, the coaches retreat is, it's a gathering of all of our coaches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a Lord of the Rings reference. And, Go ahead. <laughs> and, 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 and there's about 12 of us. And, and one of the things we did this year is we went out to a shooting range. And various guns were there. I've shot most of them. But Jake decided to bring a 50 caliber. I mean, this gun weighs 40. What are you going to bring a knife to a gunfight? I don't know. But when I looked at that thing, I'm like, he wants me to shoot that thing. And and, and I remember you shot it and I heard the noise and I felt the gas from the gun. And I said to myself, I I don't want to shoot that thing. (laughs) It's a little intimidating. (laughs) Please, Jake, don't make me shoot that thing. Not in front of all these people. And really, I stopped for a second, and that was an epiphany moment for me as, as I was preparing for this lesson today. Wow. Why, why did I become afraid? Why? What was going on? It, it was the fear of the unknown. It was really the fear of mm. I had never done it and, and the fear of looking stupid in front of everybody. So the next question I need to ask myself is, how do I overcome that fear? And I'm going to share a couple of stories later well, on. How, for, you for shot the one, gun, so what happened? Yes, for this one specifically, you put me on the hook. So all of a sudden, I've got my <laughs> peer group saying, man, Gino's not going to shoot. He's the chicken. So I, I said to myself, I don't want to look bad. So the pain of looking bad <laughs> is worse than the pain of doing something. So, okay, I got in front of the gun. I, I squatted down, put it on my shoulders. <laughs> I prayed, <laughs> said, a little, said, a little Hail, said a little Hail Mary. And I said, what's the worst thing that can happen? Jake shot it. So I squeezed the trigger. The gas it shoots out from the gun. It goes up my nose. It clears my sinuses. It's a miniature like nuclear explosion. And it goes back, <laughs> throws me back. Did I hit the target? <laughs> Not even close. But I overcame my fear. And I did it. And as you get older, that muscle in your brain gets stronger and stronger so that every challenge comes up against it. You have a reference point to say, well, I shot that gun. I can do this. And, you know, for me at that point, let's rewind that. Being afraid, looking around, seeing the peer group, having the accountability. That really helped me, Jake. Seeing you do it, having somebody show me how to do it, having somebody say to me, it's, you're not going to die from it. It's not going to kill you. The pain of not doing it is worse than the pain of actually doing it. And I sat down and I did it. Now I can shoot the 50 cal. What stories do you have, Mr. Senziano? I don't I don't have any stories. I just want you to give me the the keys to this and how it relates to multifamily. Because I wanna I wanna really spell this out for people because you did it with you know a, a different example. But in the multifamily space, right? Let's talk about when we started because I didn't have any experience, but you got educated. And multifamily is a team sport. So we were the the example of everything else that we do it's 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 done through education and it's done through action so we came together early on i was ready to go i was offering a lot of action to the equation and so we gave each other complementary skill sets and i want to say this again multifamily is a team sport so whether you you're a part of a mentorship group you have people on your team that work things or you come together with partnerships 
it's hard to go it alone. You can do it, but you're going to be working with title companies. You're going to be working with bankers. You're going to be working with brokers. There's going to be interactions with others. So Gina, what are your thoughts there to break it down specific for multifamily? I want, I want everyone to write these down. And as I'm saying these, Jake, I want you to reflect upon them also and, and interject and share what, what your thoughts are. But the first one is identify the feeling that you have. Number one, I felt overwhelmed, unsure, anxious. I got angry. Those are the feelings that I got. Even when I bought my first multifamily property, I was just overwhelmed. How, how do I do it? How do I underwrite this deal? How do I pick the right market? I, I, and then what I did after that is I associated the pain of not taking that next step versus the pain of, of just staying where I am right now. And where I was back then is I was in the restaurant. I was in the W-2. How many of you out there can, can really associate with that? Being stuck on that hamster wheel. And you know what? Not taking that action is a lot more painful than staying on that hamster wheel. So the first thing is I want you to identify the feeling, what you're feeling, where even, even associated with where it is in your body. For me, a lot of times it's my stomach. I feel it in my gut. And when you told me to shoot that gun, I got really nervous. I, I felt it, but I was able to identify it. And I was able to say to myself, calm myself down, take a look at how you did it, grab the gun and did it. Number two, get clear on what you want. Jake, that's so important for you to get clear on what you want. I want everyone out there to say to themselves, well, what do I want? Not what you don't want. I always said to myself, I don't want to be in the restaurant. Really, I don't want to be in the restaurant. But what do I do want? I do want to have financial freedom. I do want to invest in my future. So that's why it really attracted me to multifamily. The third one, educate yourself. Understand the risks. Didn't you just say, Jake, education times action equals results? Yes. Yes. You, need, you need to educate yourself, understand the risks. Number four, seek accountability. I had accountability that day. Everyone was looking at me. The Jake and Gino community that we have, they're crushing it. They've done over 54,000 units. There's over $4 billion in assets and deals that our community has bought. When individuals see their peers doing it, it gives them the confidence to do it themselves. It's a tribal mentality. It Does it take a while to do it? Absolutely. It's taken us years to build the Jake and Gino community. But when I was sitting out there in that field, surrounded by all the coaches looking at me, and I saw Jake shoot the gun, and then I knew Dylan and Scott were up next, I, I didn't want to let them down. I, I really wanted to take ownership of that, and that gave me the confidence to be able to do that. Think about it when you're in a community and you see everyone else around you closing deals, and they're they're showing you how to do it. And you're scared to call a broker. You're scared to have those first touch points. You're scared to get into the business, but you know you want to do it. That's the accountability that Gino's talking about. Number five, start small. Think big, but start small. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to buy a two-unit apartment complex, a triplex. Don't shoot for the 100 units because I'm going to be honest with you. If you think that you can do two units, great, go ahead. But if you're out there saying to yourself, I want to get 70 units on my first deal, but I don't think I can do it. Well, guess what? Your behaviors are belief driven. If you don't think you can do that, then you're not going to get the seven units. So start small, build the confidence. And that's what Jake and I did. We had bought our 25 unit apartment complex on our first deal. I had bought some smaller properties before that, but between us, our first deal was only 25 units. And then from there, the next deal was 36 units. And then the third deal was 136 units. So you see how we built upon that small win, that small progress. And if I really rewind it, Jake, it took us 18 months to get that first 25 yeah. unit apartment complex. Well, it's 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 the accomplishments in your brain and your brain telling you that you're accepted. It's okay for you to be here because many of you, if you haven't done a deal out there yet, you're looking and saying, well, multifamily seems like a pie in the sky. It's for rich people. It's for you know these big time property owners. We started with nothing. Okay. We didn't have any units. Gino had a couple duplexes, excuse me. But you get that first win and you realize, well, 20, if I can do 25, I can do 50. And then if I can do 50, I can do 100. And you start to gain confidence and that momentum starts to s snowball. Very important. And the last one, practice makes progress. Doesn't make perfection, it makes progress. Or you can even, you can even say practice makes permanence. You become permanent at what you're doing. All of a sudden you get really better at it and you don't want to be here seeking perfection because you will never seek perfection in life. That's the fixed mindset. You want to have the growth mindset where you're continuing to grow. And for Jake and myself, that third deal, we had 200 units. If we had stopped and said, hey, we're perfect, nowhere to go. We've added on another 1,500 units on top of those 200. Why? Because we kept practicing, kept making those small wins, kept progressing, kept getting better at it. And to this day, we're still learning and we're still growing through the Jake and Gino community. I'm going to quote our buddy, Stephen Pressfield. Put your ass where your heart wants to be. 
it's it's the resistance that we're talking about throughout this entire episode. That's the big thing. If something's making you uncomfortable and you're avoiding it, this is the time where you lean in and you attack. That's going to be the difference between success and failure in your life. And if you want to find a community that's going to hold you accountable, join us November 5th and 6th in Orlando for Multifamily Mastery 5. There's going to be over 1,000 attendees. We have an amazing speaker lineup. Gino and I are kicking this bad boy off. It's going to be the multifamily of the event of the year. We expect to see you there. Jakeandgino.com forward slash MM5. And gang, as always, we believe in buying deals for the long term. Think in decades. I'm Jake. He's the G-Daddy. And we make it happen. Till next time. family this is where you need to be the team you've built is incredible there is no egos here everyone is always looking to help the other person